Have a look at that! Oh, it's screaming. That is unbelievable. Oh, a nice hit. Well done! Oh. Look at that. Not a bad sight. Oh, mate. Hi, and welcome to Fishing WA. Ryan? Mate, we've been wanting this for a long time. Is it going to happen today? I know, it's a bit of a curse. Trying to get the billfish show, yes. sailfish, marlin, it's been a bit of a curse, but we're here with my good mate Steve Palumbo, and I'm slightly confident. Slightly confident? Well, look at the water, it's nice yeah, and know, blue. Know, there's bait fish, there's well, Makaira, the game boat, so we're in the, in the right area. Let's stop the talking and get the gear out. I reckon it's going to be a great show lined up, so let's have a look. After a good night's sleep at the Broom Time Lodge, we were very keen to hit the water at first light. My good mate Steve Palumbo lives in Broome and one of his favourite fish to target is the sailfish. Today we are heading well north of Ganthian Point to find some clean water and bait fish. On the way out, Harry and myself were quietly confident in finding sailies, but having local knowledge certainly helps. Now if you're chasing any sailfish marlin, you've got to be rigged up and ready to go. Right now I've got the rig. Basically, that one there is a circle hook, eagle claw, in line, tournament legal, so not offset, so you're not going to kill the fish. That one there is a 100 pound extreme leader. It's about a metre long, with a, basically a, a loop connector there with plastic sleeve. So that's the rig end. Basically, one by a local guardian, absolute a must. It's got to be fresh. That one there is perfect size. Generally, the bigger the guardian, not so good, smaller the better. And that one there, we want to cut off the beak, so use the new extreme cutters. They're good for braid, mono, and snip off the beak. Back in the water, and that one there, to separate the backbone, make it swimming better, basically squeeze the actual backbone. A lot of people try to bend the fish to basically make it swim better, but you don't. You separate the backbone by squeezing, like that. There you go. Nice loose limp. As soon as that gets dropped in the water, sailors are going to love it. Basically, we've got the Dacron loop with a sinker, and one by rigging needle. Pretty straightforward. I'll show you now how to rig up the guardie. What you want to do is here, top of the actual mouth, right, is basically create a little small hole. Like that, push it down, all the way through to the bottom, reverse the needle back out again, start from the bottom now, go all the way to that top hole, and all I'm going to do now is get my Dacron loop with the sinker attached. I'll give you a bit more of a rundown about the sinker setup and techniques. Pull it through, nice and gentle, so don't damage the actual roof of the mouth of the guardie. You don't want it to tear. Then, all you're doing is doing it basically a fold back on that loop, fold it back like this. A little bit fiddly, but it is pretty quick once you've done it a few times. Fold it back like that. Then those two loops, pinch it together, grab your circle hook. There you go. Bite's nice and tight. So it's actually hanging back by about an inch or two. And that's the rig. All right, before I attach my guardie, I'm going to show you the outfit in detail. This is the PE 2-4 Extreme Rod. It's good for jigging, it's good for bottom bouncing, and also chasing sailies. Nice little tip action on this rod. The reel is a Daiwa Salter 6500H. Great spin reel for sailies, GTs, you name it. This time we're actually putting on mono, not braid. With obviously any trolling, you want mono, you want that stretch. That's 10 kilo Stren Gold Mono. Attached, we've got the Richter Wine On Leader. That one there basically is a 100 pound wind on leader all the way through to the end, which I'll just grab here, down to the Richter swivel and clip, high tensile, don't go cheap. You want a decent uh, swivel and clip. Now just attach on the guardie. Very simple. We've got the teasers out right now. Palumbo's telling me there's uh, a lot of bait in the sounder. I'm getting all excited. Let's get into it. Now it's so important when you're trolling for marlin and sailfish to keep an eye on the spread. Keeping an eye on the spread means being able to see in the water column. These are my new Maui gyms, love these sunnies. What it does, it allows me basically to look into the water and actually see marlin come up behind the guardi or the teasers. So important. Talking about teasers, the more teasers, the more sort of commotion, the more pods are going to come up there. Marlin and sailfish doesn't matter. Right now we've got two transom teasers. We've got one on the outrigger. Normally we'd run another one as well, but maybe later on today we might do a bit of fly fishing as well. So we've got multiple teasers. We've got one guardian in the water right now. Basically, bail, I'm open. Finger on the trigger here. 
The idea now is it's a little bit quiet, so I've got one guard in the water, but when, it, when it's going off, you can actually just keep on trolling around and do tease and switch. What's that? Basically, we're gonna tease them up with the teasers and then switch over straight to a bait. And if they're sitting on the teaser and they basically won't get off it, what we'll do is we'll pull the teasers in quick, drop back a guardie. As soon as he bill whacks it, we're gonna dump the line, count around about five seconds, close over the bar arm, and let the actual fish take the bait. He'll basically swim off with it. The corner, or basically the actual circle hook will go right in the corner there and we've got him, and basically it'll start peeling off drag. We're on 10 kilo mono, so we don't want too tight. That's basically targeting sailfish. To find out more information about Fishing WA, or just want to ask a question, like us on Facebook. Now whilst I'm waiting for uh, fish to come up in the spread, I'll give you a little bit more rundown about the actual rig. Now I showed you before, but a lot of people say to me, what's to go with the sinker? The idea behind it is the billfish will come up and basically bill whack the guardie. When we actually drop the line back, often they'll actually grab it straight away, but sometimes they don't. So what they'll do basically is I'll swim back around, look for it, but as this is sinking down, with that weight, it's taking it down and it's slowly swimming down. So the fish sees it and eats it. So if he doesn't grab it straight away, and he turns back around for it, that there swimming basically like a natural bait fish going down the water column, billfish just cannot resist that. So little sinker setup, dacron loop, circle hook, very simple sort of fishing, but these fish can be a little bit wily, so you've got to have everything ready in your favour. Yes, and on. It's amazing, I just saw it come up the spread, just about to have a bite, usual sort of thing, got the sandwich out. Murphy's and, Law. Yeah, Murphy's Law and straight into it. Now I'm not too sure what it is. Does it look like it may be a small little marlin, maybe a tuna, I'm not too sure, but it was right behind the teaser, put the gutty back to it, and also felt it was a bit of a take, opened up the bar alarm, dumped it, and got him. I'm just going to bring in that teaser for us there, Harry. Yeah, please. Often a little bit of commotion when you've got obviously so many teasers in the water, but it's so important to have the teasers. So normally after a hook up, basically, especially if you've got a good crew on board, you want to clear the teasers as quick as you can. Sorry, I have my back to you. Clear the teasers and basically relax. There you go, Spaniard, not mate. Not size either. I reckon it's going to go for another run, so it's going to keep that rod tip in the water. So important. Most fish are lost right at the end, so don't rush it. All right, there it is, mate. Did that last run as per usual under the boat. Now normally, you know, I'm like yourself, mate, normally keep a feed of mackerel, but I reckon we're here for sailing. Might just release it, what do you reckon? Yeah, we'll let that one go. I think it's just cut the day. line. Let's watch the fangs. You might just want to cut the leader, mate. That hook will come out. Broom mackerel, Spaniard. Oh, they're slightly going back. Yep, he's under the boat. Right. Here's lucky day. Well, have to get the... Uh, Outriggers, teasers, back out again. It's part and parcel. I don't mind by catch, whether it be tuna, um, mackie. It's all part and parcel of a day chasing selfish. <laughs> Throughout Fishing WA TV series, you've seen us use the Extreme gear. Let me show you just some of the products. We've got the Extreme PE braid, very well priced. From brim braid all the way through to Jewfish, awesome stuff. We've got the Extreme hooks. From skippy size all the way to Jewfish, snapper, you name it. Ultra sharp, ultra strong. We've got the metal slice. Everyone loves the metal slice there. From herring all the way up to Taylor salmon size, great product. You always need leader, the extreme leader. From low poundage all the way up to the heavy stuff there for offshore deep water fishing. If you're chasing jewfish or snapper, bolch and groper, the octo jig and the metal jig, all different sizes, different colors, this will get you a lot of reef fish and out of the rods. The Fishing WA extreme range is huge from squidding to bottom bouncing, to trolling, to poppering, to jigging, you name it, we've got it. Very well priced, ultra light. Check them out at your nearest Extreme Tackle retailers or check them out online, extremetackle.com.au. That's what I'm talking about. You want me to get rid of this line, this teaser? Woohoo! 
A little bit of pandemonium. Yeah, we've got to get all this stuff out and the rest of it. Talked about it before about obviously a lot of teasers. There's no panic, no stress. Good mate Steve Plummer that lives here knows his stuff. He said put out a Richter soft grassy. Because often you can put baits in the water, but it can be the pusher that actually brings the fish up as well. He was on the pusher, Bill whacking it, got Harry to basically bring in the Richter pusher. As soon as he realised there was no more push in the water, he dropped straight back to the teasers. That's where my guardie was. As soon as he bill whacked it, dropped my finger, dumped the line, and on ski. All right. Boat's now neutral. Teasers are in. Thanks for that, Harry. All right, I'll clear this one over here out the way. Thanks, mate. So important, obviously, to have a clean deck as well. So get the teasers out the way. That's selfish. I don't know. I'm sure maybe back at home you saw the jump. As soon as it had the guardie in its mouth, started to jump, trying to spit the guardie. In this case, the guardie might have come out, but the hook's in. They're on 10 kilo mono here, the string gold. So whilst I'm sort of keen to sort of crank up a little bit, just don't go too much on 10 kilo line class. Bit of a tip as well, if you want to sort of slow down the fish as well, without increasing the drag, sometimes you can just sort of thumb the spool a little bit. In this case, it still wants to run, so I'll leave it. So you can sort of you thumb the spool a little bit like that, wind down. Thumb it, wind down, just thumb it a little bit. Allow me to get line back onto the reel, but if it wants to take off, it's still got medium set drag. A nice bend in the PE 2 to 4 extreme rod, Harry. Yeah, it's getting a workout. Yeah, we normally sort of use this rod for bottom bouncing, soft plastics, jigging, say back in Perth and whatnot, but Steve said to me um, he likes using jig rods when targeting sailies and uh, being a bit more shorter, a bit more parabolic, put a fair bit of pressure back on the fish. And amazing, Steve caught it. He said we're sort of getting close to that tide change, the water's starting to um, be nice rich blue. If the water's a bit green, normally you're not going to have a lot of bait and not a lot of sailfish around. So he's found a nice patch of water, it's got bait, blue water and Inski. There's the sailie on the surface there. We love doing obviously the sports fishing and it's so important if you are going to run light line, don't kill the fish for just the sake of having a bit of fun. So we're just sort of just driving up a little bit, still downwind of the fish. So there's going to be very little belly in the actual mono. But the idea is to get the fish in, have some fun without killing fish. Jeez, Ryan, how much line did it take off? I know, mate? that first run, mate, I will say on 10 <laughs> kilo, stripped off a couple of hundred metres. A lot of people come into my shop and ask about, you know, they really want to get their, bill, their first billfish because it's something very special. You know, you're not here to eat them. It's just something magical about getting a marlin or a sailfish, your first one, and it just gets better and better. Well, our luck has changed. It's been a few years. We've been trying and trying and trying, and Never has worked out our way, has it? No, it's always been basically bad weather or the fish has been quiet and we've been at the really good spots. But, Palumbo said the sailies are on Ryan, you've got to get yourself up here. So we've yeah. basically jumped on the big bird, straight up to Broome. We only got in last night, so we're straight into the fish, so good fishing. That is a good sail. Yeah. That wind on leaders there now. Have a look at that. Palumbo caught it. 30 minutes, mate, and I reckon we're about 10 minutes into 30 minutes. And yeah, uh, oh, when he said he was going to ring the bell, I thought he was going for a beer, but <laughs> it's actually I, fish. I thought the bell was to say we're going home, but it's not going to happen. It's going to thumb that spool very, very gently. This way, all fish are lost, generally. Right at the boats. Just take your time. Just using that rod. Thumb the spool. If he wants to run, I'm going to let him go. Yeah, now look at that. You can see why people come to Broome. I mean, it's a great tourist location, Cable Beach, the whole lot, but the fishing is well renowned. And you don't have to go to Rolly Shoals to get good fish. Right here, you can see we're quite close to the mainland. A fair way north of Broome, but close to the mainland. Look at that, my friend. Let's do one more turn. That is magnificent. Hopefully back at home you get to sort of see the nice colours. It's always a little bit hard with that glare, but magical. 
Look at that, Harry. Yeah, that's unreal, isn't it? How's it colours, mate? Beautiful, that nice sail. And I reckon we'll cut the hook, mate. We won't muck around with it. That circle hook will be basically spat out within a few days and uh, he'll swim off. So no point trying to rip the hook out and kill a fish. Have a look at that. Have a look at that beautiful broom sailfish. I oh, know, you want to go? Get ready if I let it go, Harry. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to cut it. Let it go. All right, we'll grab that off here. So important, as mentioned, don't rush it. Basically, I was grabbing the leader, which is a 100 pound wind on, but if you're starting to thrash around like that, there's no point harming the fish or harming the angler. Get a stick face into you. Okay, you ready? Say goodbye. Look at that. Off he goes. See behind us, right there? That is the best part. He's swimming right behind the boat now, unharmed. Bit of a shock for him, obviously. Big fight on 10 kilo. Shock for him? What's shock yeah. for me? We actually got one. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> shocked both of us. This year, we are giving away $2,000 worth of extreme tackle, as well as a Bradley six rack smoker valued at $1,200. To enter, all you have to do is like us on Facebook. <laughs> How am I supposed to be playing this rhyme? It's obviously not running, so... Yeah, just short pump winds. It's so important to keep a bend always in your rod. There's obviously a lot of stretch in this mono line, so basically you want to make sure that, yeah, plenty of bend in the rod tip. Short pump winds. There we are, you're going to see a bit there. Well, Steve did say that tide chain. Ah, look at that. Uh, Put on a great show. I think it's uh, wrapped up, is it? Uh, no? Right in the corner. What normally happens is these sailies will actually take down the guardie and being a circle hook basically, it will sort of work its way out of its sort of mouth area into the corner of the actual mouth and normally get a jaw hook. So normally it's okay. one doing the right thing by the fish, not killing the fish by having J hooks. Yeah. Jay hooks being your normal sort of suicide. This is a circle hook, so right, if you're sports I'll step fishing. Back a bit so you can yeah. grab that leader. So if you're sports fishing, you've got to use circle hooks, especially these inline tournament legal ones. Hang on, it's gonna go maybe. If it does, I'm gonna dump the line. Yep. Okay, so just in gear, thanks, Stevie. Look at that. Beautiful broom sunlight. Cute little fish. So important when chasing marlin or sailfish to definitely have plenty of teasers in the water. Now through my shop I used to actually custom make sort of uh, sailing teasers and marlin teasers but got a bit time consuming so luckily I've got a good mate Steve Palumbo who lives in Broome that now makes them. They're called Easy Tease Teasers. So handy. You've got your rattling sort of uh, flows, you've got your glow squids, all different colours, you've got your Henderson bird. So important to have it obviously rigged up right and also it's got the wire as well so very handy. Now. Today's been all about obviously a lot of the UV colours like the Richter UV and these glow squids attracting the actual sailies up to the spread. It just so happens, Mark Richter's good mate of mine's actually got a full range of UV stuff. So you've got UV uh, green, pink, UV aurora, UV blue, and also this new one as well, which they call the 4 426 Lumo as well. So all these different UV colours plus a new glow squid one as well. You can buy them unrigged or rigged. I prefer to actually buy them fully rigged, ready to go. UV. Whilst we may not see it, the fish actually do see it. So sailies in particular, marlin, they see basically through the UV itself. And obviously a lot of the bait fish will show up in UV colour spectrum. So these ones here match the hatch. Love my Richter soft grasses. Love my Easy Tease teasers. Get yourself rigged up and ready. You'll catch more fish. Nice bend in the rod there, Harry. Yeah, mate. Those six foot four, uh, six. you know, P two to four. Yep. Unreal. Yeah, I like it. Steve, you're saying they like the surrounding the six foot, six foot four rods. A little bit of tippy action, which you, what you can see there. Just to help sort of compensate 
for basically, if the billfish comes at you, it's nice having basic softer rod. Right now, if you jumped at me, I've got a little bit of sort of uh, room to move. You could say if it's a quite a stiff rod, fish jumps towards you, slack line, you lose fish. So you want a little bit of tippiness. So these sort of modern jig rods now are so good. You can troll with them, you can switch bait, you can do soft plastic stuff. Bottom fishing. Bottom fishing, very handy. Yep. Look at that in the sunlight. Yeah. Hooked right in the corner. Broom sailfish. All right, would well, you want me to cut it? Do a cut, mate, and I think that's All right, us, that's mate. us for the day, isn't it? With the sharpest knife and broom. Right down low, yep. There we go. Sweet, he'll throw that. And that is the best part. He's actually swimming off alive. Well, are we? Well done, man. That was a good fight, that one. And uh, that is definitely us for today, mate. I'm spent. I'm done. <laughs> a big thank you to Steve Palumbo, good mate of mine, to obviously put us onto the fish. So yeah, without definitely. his help, we wouldn't have got your first billfish in this exactly. show. Exactly. And we've been trying to do this one for a while. Oh, so until next week, see you later.